Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Ursha, and this week we're doing another movie review. This is Frankenstein, Created Woman. <laughs> uh, this is another entry into the Frankenstein franchise from Hammer Films, uh, which originally started with The Curse of Frankenstein. Uh, of course, based on the legendary Mary Shelley novel. And uh, this film right here was released in 1967. Uh, and of course stars the great Peter Cushing in the role of the Baron Victor Frankenstein. Mad scientist, mad genius, you know. <laughs> uh, this movie, I feel, is so entertaining. And this is my favorite sequel in the franchise, for sure. Uh, with the original Curse of Frankenstein uh, definitely being my favorite overall. Um, but this is definitely right up there. Uh, the film also stars Susan Denberg in the role of Christina. And uh, Robert Morris in the role of uh, Hans. And uh, Thorley Walters in the role of Dr. Hertz, um, the Baron Victor Frankenstein's assistant. He's kind of dim-witted at that. He's like an Igor-type character, <laughs> in a way. Uh, without the hump. <laughs> Um, but I really enjoy this because it kind of takes the classic story and flips it on its ear, you know. Uh, instead of the big hulking undead monster, you have a beautiful woman. <laughs> uh, it kind of it's kind of similar to uh, Doctor Jekyll and Sister Hyde in that sense, how it's taking a classic tale and kind of you know turning it around and you know bringing the female aspect to the story, you know, and I really like it. It's really well done. Uh, so the film starts with uh, Frankenstein is continuing his crazy experiments, you know, uh, and he's found a way basically to conquer death. He puts himself in this kind of uh, laboratory thing and uh, locks himself up and basically dies for one whole hour, but apparently his soul is still kept alive, you know, and lives on. So he feels he's basically conquered death. He feels like he could probably um, trap a soul even though the body is dead. And then afterwards repair the body and put the the soul that's still alive back into that body, returning them to life. Uh, and that's kind of basically what the story is about. Uh, so what happens is we meet this young boy who uh, witnesses his father being uh, put to death by the guillotine because apparently he was a murderer, you know, and they caught him and they uh, sentenced him to death. And he witnesses, he sees the guillotine drop on his father and he's like horrified. Um, but we find later on that now he is living as a servant to Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, how convenient, right? <laughs> uh, there are a few convenient plot devices, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, and they, they, they both live in this inn, which is run by uh, Cleve and his young daughter, uh, Christina. And uh, Christina seems at first to be a very pretty young girl, but apparently she has, a, you know, half of her face is like deformed, so she kind of parts her head, her hair in the middle and uh, puts it over her face and, and uh, she's basically paralyzed uh, on one side of her body you know so she, she kind of walks um, a little difficult you know she walks with a limp and she can't really move her arm um, but the other side is perfectly normal you know um, and what happens is she gets harassed all the time by these couple of like rich punks, these rich, like, aristocrat dudes uh, that think they're high and mighty and they they go into this bar all the time and drink all they want and never pay a damn dime, you know. <laughs> and they keep serving them, you know. And they at the same time, they make fun of the man's daughter and they harass her, you know, and uh, make fun of her deformity, you know. And, uh, this guy, Hans, who is the boy that saw his father die, 
uh, he's in love with young Christina, you know. He accepts her for who she is, you know, and he loves her. Uh, so he sees these guys making fun of her and, you know, he takes them on, you know. <laughs> and let me tell you, he puts up quite a fight. <laughs> you know, he takes all three of these guys on by himself and, like, kicks their ass, basically, you know. Um, but at one point it gets crazy. He grabs a knife and slashes the dude right in the face, you know. Uh, and uh, he gets taken away the, by the police, you know. Uh, but they decide not to press charges because they're like, well, what the hell, you know, it's three guys against one, you know. <laughs> How is the court going to see that, you know. Uh, so they let him go. Uh, but what happens is uh, they go and harass her once again, you know. <laughs> And uh, then they go to the inn and they beat the crap out of the uh, innkeeper, Cleve, um, because he won't serve them, you know. Uh, and they just want to steal all the liquor, you know, trash the place, and uh, they end up beating that poor guy to death, you know. And they end up framing uh, Hans for it, because they know he has kind of a, a wild temper, you know. He has a little bit of his father in him, you know, the killer, <laughs> Uh, and what happens is they sentence him to death, just like his father, you know, and he gets the guillotine dropped on him, you know, and this is a pretty, uh, gory film by Hammer standards, you know, we see the decapitated head of Hans, uh, several times in the movie. <laughs> uh, so what do you think happens? What do you think they do with the body? Of course, Dr. Frankenstein digs him up and, you know, takes the body to his lab to try and, you know, resurrect the guy, you know, keep his soul alive, and, like, he, th his plan is to put the soul back into his body, you know, and bring him back to life, but the body has no head, you know, <laughs> so it doesn't quite work out, um, and then when Christina finds out, when she sees him getting beheaded by the guillotine, uh, she can't take it, you know, she's so distraught that she throws herself off the bridge and commits suicide. Uh, so yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and of course, she's dead too, so what do you think Dr. Frankenstein is going to do? <laughs> he takes, he takes her body, <laughs> you know. Uh, and of course, they transfer the soul of young Hans into the body of young Christina. Christina is brought back to life. Not only that, but they do plastics. They do like surgery on her body, and they get rid of the deformity, and and uh, she's no longer paralyzed. She's just pure beautiful, and she also has blonde hair for some reason. <laughs> like I don't, I didn't really get that. Why does she have blonde hair? Uh, but because early in the film she has dark hair. But at any rate, she's very beautiful. Susan Denberg is very beautiful. Yeah. And she uses her seductive powers to lure men in, you know, because she's got a sadistic side to her. She's inherited uh, Hans's kind of vengeful spirit, uh, because Hans kind of talks to her uh, in her. I don't know if it's in, in her head, like subconsciously, but you you hear his voice, uh, and the guys hear his voice too. So it's not just her. Uh, it's like his vengeful spirit has returned in, in the body of uh, Christina. Uh, she, she also takes on, she also inherits the murderous nature of Hans' father. So yeah, not only is she out for revenge for what happened to them, of them being killed, but she has inherited the veins and the, the vengeful murderous nature of Han's father as well. And I love this, these scenes where you see her talk to the guy's head and you see his head plopped up on the desk, you know, I'm like, wow, this is pretty uh, gory for a Hammer film, yeah, and it is. It's even got a bit of slasher elements in there because she takes out this one guy with like a, a machete or something, you know, like a big, uh, huge, like, hatchet thing, you know. And it's pretty bloody, you know. <laughs> uh, so it's, she basically uses her beauty and her seductive powers and lures the men in. And if, who do you think her first victims are going to be? Those rich jerks, those real 
a-holes, you know, <laughs> these punks, these thugs. And uh, she sets her sights on them, boy. <laughs> and uh, she gets the job done, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I think uh, Susan Denberg does a fantastic job in this film. She does very beautiful and is, and she just has that power of seduction. She chews the scenery, you know. She reels you in. She reels the viewer in. And uh, you buy it, you know. <laughs> uh, and of course, Peter Cushing is just always fantastic in every movie he's in. And uh, I definitely think he's easily the best Victor Frankenstein in movie history. No one plays that role better than him. Uh, here he isn't quite as sinister as he is in some of the other Frankenstein movies. Um... But it's still there, you know, he's still doing doing his thing, you know. He's classic Baron Victor Frankenstein in every way. Um, he doesn't have a lot of money, so he just kind of uses his wits, his quick wits and his, uh, and his genius to uh, get his way, you know, to kind of spare some chump change, you know, to get dinners for people, you know, like he offers to give surgery to the guy's head after he gets his face slashed, you know, see, he still has kind of that dubious nature in him. Um, but it's all in the name of science, baby. That's what it's all about, you know. No matter what he does, it's all for science and uh, furthering his knowledge of life and death as well, you know, equally. Life and death equally, you know. He wants to master both, and he does, you know, because he's a genius. Uh, and that's what I love about this film. It's very entertaining, very well acted, and it's just classic hammer horror in every way. So definitely, guys, check out Frankenstein Created Woman. Definitely one of the best sequels in the Hammer Frankenstein franchise. And thank you for joining me, Sean Patrick Urshan, in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared.